Hi guys, welcome back to another lesson from Arts Cool Media. Here today with Gavin O'Donnell. I'm going to show you how to use the stencil system and then we will take a look at some of the supplies that I use and then we'll move on into the drawing. So with our stencil system we're going to line up the square and diamond in step one down the or up the top left and the bottom right and then same in step two we're going to line up the two squares one up the top one down the bottom and then in step three we're going to line up our two squares one up the top left and again one down the bottom right so this will be our reference we'll put that to the side for now um, this is definitely going to be one of the harder drawings that we've done one of the more tricky ones so the pencils that I use, I've got a range of Derwent pencils from 2H up to 8B, um, 2H being the lightest, 8B being the darkest. I also use um, blending stumps or tortillions. These are for blending the graphite on the paper. Uh, I also have these erasers, the netted eraser and the pencil eraser from Faber-Castell. Um, I also use a tissue for blending. I wrap this around my finger and then lightly rub it on the graphite after I apply it. And then I've got a brush for sweeping little bits off the paper. This is to refrain from blowing on the paper because little bits of water and stuff tend to come out of your mouth when you do that. And when that goes on the paper it tends to ruin it. So you don't want that. So. I'm going to line up my page now and then I'm going to put the stencil on top. I have my image around the middle section of the page and I'm going to hold it down nice and firmly and I'm going to draw in my squares and diamonds and then we're going to move on into these circles. So make sure you take your time doing this this is a very important step to make sure you don't mess anything up make sure everything's nice and tight and you don't move um, I've taken a light pencil, it's a 2H pencil and I'm going to use that to draw in all these shapes make sure you get every single one and then pull your stencil away see what you're left with so it should be something like this We'll move on to step two now. I'm going to line up my two diamonds and then I'm going to move on into the shapes. Again, I'm going to do this very lightly and carefully. Make sure you get every single shape. So we should be left with something like that for step two. We'll move on to step three now. I'm going to line up my two squares. Again, holding my stencil down nice and firm. And we'll draw in all of these shapes for last step. So this is what we should be left with for step 3. We'll move on into the drawing now. Um, I've just started with the area of the face and I'm going to draw in the little elements of the nose and the beard area. Make sure you have a very sharp pencil for this part. All these elements are very, um, very small and intricate. And it needs to be done with care. And 
and I'm just moving on to the beard now. We've got two little sections on the left and the right that come down then into the kind of triangular shape, an upside down triangle. Um, and then we have um, a little crescent shape here. And we've got four lines that come out of it then. So I'm going to just fix up the thickness of the nose. And for the eyes, I've just drawn in two of these little shapes here. They're directly across from each other, straight across from each other. And then I've just drawn in two little semicircles in the top parts of the eye and filled them in. And then he's got a little dot in the very middle. Do this with care and then we can move on to the hair. All these shapes of the hair are very, very tricky. Um, so I'm just taking it one little strand at a time. Just they kind of curve down into a ball kind of shape. And I'm just getting the collar in of the monk's robes. So I'm going to just sketch in these lines first. These dark lines with my mechanical pencil. And then I will darken them up then afterwards. So I'm just pop back up to the hair strands of hair now and I'm just darkening up these first couple of strands just getting them in place and figuring out their position so you're going to need a lot of patience for this this is a very very intricate and uh, timely drawing so we've got three little kind of strands that go to the right just to the right of the eyebrow and they just finish up above the eyebrow um, down, down this bottom section to the right side these strands kind of interlock, interchange with each other and we have four on the left and four on the right and then one long one that pops out down the bottom So I'm just going to work out my best way of um, trying to get these in place. And then we're just, I'm just moving on now to the left side. I'm just lightly sketching them in first. When I'm happy with their position, I will then go over them with a darker pencil. And make them more definite. So again, I'm just using a um, 2H pencil here for the initial sketch in of these strands of hair. And I'm just getting the flow, the general shape. I'm looking back and forth for my reference the whole time. So you just need to carry out this same process for the rest of the hair. Um, I'm just working out sketching in the best um, or the easiest strand first so just like there you see me sketching the one that attaches to the beard first and then I can sketch in the rest of these in relation to that strand I 
and again these ones kind of interlock and interchange Then these shapes on the outside, um, you're kind of left with the outside of the or original um, stencil shape. They kind of mold into uh, the curves of the hair. So I'm just going to take another light pencil and I'm just going to do some light shading across the hair and darken up the different shapes. I've also added some lines to the face just some hatch lines. This is just where you apply lines close to each other and um, I've just done this with a light pencil. And I'm just using my mechanical pencil again here just to darken up these shapes of the hair. And then I'm using my hatched shading technique just to apply a bit of um, texture to the hair. I'm just touching up the eyebrows, making them a little bit thicker and changing the curve very slightly of the nose. I'm just taking my pencil eraser here just to make it come in a little bit at the eyes, a little bit more. I'm going to darken up the edges of the beard now. And down the bottom, it just kind of it doesn't come straight down. It has a little kind of little tweaks in it. And I'm just going to touch up that area with the netted eraser, and then we'll come in with our mechanical pencil and apply an even shade of graphite to the beard so when you have that done um, we can start applying darker shades to the lines of the collar of the robes So I'm going to get this curve in now of um, the arm on the right side and we're just going to use those initial lines from the stencil to build our new lines off. And again I'm just finding the easiest lines first and then we have these curves that come down from below the book beside the book. Just a little little curve down at the top of the sleeve. And we've got this darker section where the elbow links into the rest of the arm. I'm just gonna lightly sketch in the hand now. The thumb is the only part that comes above the book. Um the rest of it is gone in behind the book. So once you're happy with the lines, you can then darken them up. It's a very slow process. Just bear in mind that um, I have this time lapsed very slightly so I'm not actually moving at this speed I'm 
when I get those initial lines sketched in and I'm happy with them I then move on and darken them up so I'm just working on the little um, the detail at the back of the head now just where the circle, I'll just continue that line down with the circle um, just kind of follow the line down, curve your wrist around Let's do it very lightly first off and then if you're happy with it and think it has the right thickness um, you can darken it up then So I'm just getting this, these shapes in the middle now. Um, like these robes are not symmetrical. In the original drawing, they kind of, you know, they're very, um, they're very uneven. So don't worry about that. I've just moved up to the book now, and I'm going to darken up these lines, get them established. And we can erase out that section also. We don't need that anymore. Again, I was happy with the lines of the sleeve, so I've come in now and darkened them up. I'm going to take my mechanical pencil and do a little bit of shading. Um, I've left a, light, a little light space between the edge of the sleeve and the center. And just leave this alone, don't touch it. And then I've taken my blending stump and I'm going to rub over the graphite. I'm just going to add some hatch lines then to the ton. I've just shortened the ton a little bit because I thought it was a little bit too long so I've come in with my darkest pencil now, my 8B pencil and I'm going to go over these lines again and darken them up so this was done in like three stages you kind of need to repeat that same process for most of the drawing you do your light sketch first then you do another um, kind of definite line and then you can come in again then with your darkest pencil to add more to it so I've just tilted my dark pencil now to the side it's at a very low angle and I'm just going to apply some shading now to these robes again this is the same process that you're going to use throughout the drawing you're going to need to tilt your pencil to the side and apply this um, dark shade and I'm just doing this is a very dark pencil but I'm doing it very lightly at first and then I come in then with my mechanical pencil and add some um, sort of texture to the to the robes and then with these bits that curve down from the hair they're darker first and then they come into a lighter shade and then we have these kind of little white lines throughout those shapes whatever you can pick up on so I'm just going to add some hatch lines now to these other parts of the collar I'm just darkening up different sections of the beard and the hair, touching areas up here and there. Add more texture now to the to the sleeve. We've got darker sections to the edge, near where the lighter part is. I'm just taking a light pencil now and I'm going over my lightest parts of the robe just to darken them up very slightly because they're not actually white they're very 
low um, value. Again, we've moved into the center, and I'm just touching up these curves. So I sketched them in first, and then I'm repeating my same process light to dark. So with the book um, I'm going to sketch in a rectangular shape first. You might need to turn your page to a certain angle so you're comfortable with this. So you get straight lines that um, line up with each other. And then we've got um, a kind of a darker part towards the middle of the book and then there's a lighter bit of shading around it and there's a little white space so just watch out for that and then I'm just coming in with a pencil eraser just to um, fix up those lines a little bit tidy them up and I'm using my darkest pencil now and I'm making these lines more definite and then I'm going to apply some some of that um, even shading now with a 2H sorry a 3H pencil 2H will do also if you have that and then in each of the corners of the book we've got these um, kind of quarter circles and we have a diamond shape down in the middle again you might need to turn the, the page to a certain angle so you're comfortable with doing the pencil strokes. And again we have a little white outline. So again watch out for that. I'm putting my darker pencil there and I'm just going to touch that up a little bit. You can see how I'm leaving this white, this white space between um, the dark line in the middle and the outer, the outer section of the book. So once that's done, we'll start taking a look at the um, the other section here. So with this circle that comes down, or this part of the circle, I just sketched in where I think the um, where the line comes down, what looks right and I'm happy with that then I darken it up and we've got a lighter section on the edges and a darker section in the middle so yeah this part is um, it's very it's very very tricky No, doesn't matter how long you're drawing this part is always going to be challenging anything that's you know circular is always very difficult but just sketch it in the best you can um, and then we can darken up the middle sections there's a darker line um, on either side of that middle section so just watch out for that. So with this inner circle now, um, I'm just going to take my mechanical pencil and I'm going to darken up this edge first, get it established. Um, then where, the, where this little small circle um, comes in, we've got a darker bit of shading below that. It's just to show that the circle's above it, we'll add in some shading then to below the part. Um, so I've just moved on a little bit here now, I've added some of these little circles. Um, you can see these little circular shapes throughout this outer ring. Um, I've just done these very lightly with a mechanical pencil and then I've gone over it with a blending stump. So you apply the even grade of shading first, 
blend that and then apply the circles and blend that again and then if they're really faded you can add little bits here and there to make them pop out a little bit more so I'm just repeating the same process for this inner ring I'm going to shade in the middle section first and I'm going to leave a white outline on either side and try to make this the same thickness all the way around there's no shortcut or no trick to this it's just about um, eyeballing, eyeballing it and seeing if you can pick out any mistakes so when I'm happy with that I take my mechanical pencil and I add a darker line to the inner section of the ring And then I'm just, you can see me now adding these little circles with the same pencil, same mechanical pencil. Um, and the, the, um, the grade in this I think is a HB or a B. So once I've done this now I come back in with my darkest pencil, 7B or 8B, even a 6B will do. And I'm going to darken up these bottom sections of the inner ring. So just look back and forth from your reference the whole time and just keep repeating this process. Sketch it in first, darken up, darken up, darken up. So I'm going to start with these, one of these little um, circles on the edge now. I first off sketch in a straight line, cutting the circle in half, and then I repeat the same process horizontally. I've also turned my page to, for me to make a more comfortable line. I need the page this way. So um, there's like a bar going straight across, cutting the circle in half. Well, no, I added a line straight through it and then I added another line on either side of that bar going across to thicken up a little bit and that bar um, peels out then into the, um, the outer ring of this small circle so th this is the best way I find to build up these little circles and then I'm going to cut another half in the circle I'm going to turn my page and I'm going to cut another half. So by the time you do all that, and then we need to sketch in these little, um, uh, I'm not sure what to call them, these little curves that they go between each line on the edge. Um, and just they, they have the same kind of curve for each one. And once I do that, I then darken up these initial lines that I did to cut the circle in half. And you just keep repeating that process, darken up all of the lines. And make sure you have the same thickness then between each one. Um, and then we can work on this little inner circle again. We're going to darken that up. And then I've just taken my netted eraser and I've added a bit more of a gap in the middle section. So now it's about looking at your reference and picking out where the dark shades are first. So 
so there's a white space between most of them it doesn't go dark dark it will go dark medium light or dark light dark they don't all seem to um, be right beside each other anyway the dark sections So yeah, this will be the same, the same process you need to repeat two more times after we finish this. And then also to note, um, towards the edge of the small circle um, over the right side, it kind of fades out. So the way I created that effect is I sketched in first with a very light line. Then I applied my netted eraser to it and we're left over with these kind of faded sketched lines. So that's just the way to kind of do that effect. Again, just it's all about looking at your reference, figure figuring figuring it out, um, and then taking your time. And then we'll just add some darker lines then to um behind the circle and then some more darker lines to the edge of these sort of um, it's almost like a star shape and now I'm going to work on this middle ring I'm going to apply an even shade of um, 2H first. You can see how I've got my pencil tilted just to apply this evenly. And once I do that, um, we have these kind of eight looking shapes. And then we have other little lines throughout um, the inner ring or the middle ring. Um, so I just I just use my pencil eraser to um, draw in these eight shapes and then I come back in then with my mechanical pencil and just work in some darker lines around the edges of this um, this eight kind of shape and then towards this top circle again below it it's going to be darker and then I've applied another um, another bit of blending stump. You can just see here how I use my netted eraser to pick out little highlights. So here I'm just figuring out where um, these little half circles start. I've done a line up, a ghost line up from the top of the monk's head. So we are going to draw in all our little semi-circles. Once I got that first one established from the top of St. John's head, we can start building these other semi-circles from that first one. And even, um, so we take this one down the bottom right side. Um, if you look at how that lines up with even St. John's ton, you can see that um, you know it's pretty much straight up from his thumb a little bit to the right though um, and that's where it starts so you can use these little kind of visual guides to kind of help you out with your placement of um, you know of different objects that's that's the way I find it doing things and it works for me so once we get all those sketched in we're going to draw in another little um, an inner circle then and then they all have these straight lines coming out from the center and then we have these little um, these kind of stepped shapes within the circles and then there's also these um, these other shapes that 
come out from St. John's head and they all have three circles um, at the top section of them. So I'll keep working on our step shapes, do that in each little circle. And see I'm just doing them in one go on either side. Once you're happy with all of those, um, we'll start darkening up. We'll start darkening up these sections. And the majority of the lines are darker than the rest. Um, just another thing to bear in mind. And then some of the sh step shapes have shading within them and then shading around them. So just um, keep looking back and forth from your reference from for this section and you know you just got to figure that out yourself. Again this is time lapsed very slightly so I'm not actually moving at this speed. So I'm just going to add some general hatch lines and start darkening things up now. And you just got to keep repeating the same process for um, the rest of the section behind St. John's head. So you really, really need patience for this section because it's extremely intricate. So I'm just touching up some areas here below the circle in the middle. It's casting that bit of a shadow onto the rest of those um, small rings. And you have this darker line then that comes out from that and I'm just touching up some of those little circles and same in this section darkening up some of those lines so I've taken my 8B pencil now I'm happy with all of those shapes and their placement so I'm going to go over all of my lines that are very dark with this pencil. So you can see how I don't just go straight in with this pencil, I build it up slowly. And this is the same case with the majority of this drawing. So we're just going to work in our other semicircles now. And I'm just using my visual guides, like sections of the circle on the left, and you know, I'm using the eyes, parts of the hair, just to help me line up these semicircles, and also to place these um, these shapes with the three circles in them, just to help me place those. So you won't hear me talking for this next little section and um, I'll just be repeating myself so you just really got to repeat the same steps I showed you for the first half of this inner section um, now when we get to a new section uh, I'll walk through that.
So when you have that section finished off, hopefully it looks pretty good. We will move on up to our circle at the top. Again, I'm going to use my same technique for this first circle. I'm going to draw in my straight line going vertical and then my straight line going horizontal. And on that horizontal line, we will then add two other lines to the outside of the initial line. And then we'll start cutting our circle in half diagonally and then cutting those little segments in half with the rest of our lines. This is time lapsed a little bit more than the other circle. You got to see how I did it. Um, so again, I'll just talk a little bit about it. Um, I'm just doing this kind of light sketch around the outside, coming out into the faded section at the top. It's a little bit dark at the moment, but I take my netted eraser here and I fade that out a little bit. And then we can start adding in our curves at the edge. You just really got to do these lightly first to get them to look proper and look right. So then once I have those sketched in, um, I take my mechanical pencil and I go over them and darken them up. And if I think they're not lined up properly, I take my pencil eraser then and um, you know fix them up, make them a little bit thinner or whatnot, or change the di change the curve or the direction the curve is going. So again, this out this outer section is a little bit too dark, so I take my different erasers and work in the faded out effect. And then I take my mechanical pencil again and darken up these lines. And same with the little inner circle. Again, darken that up. And then I'm going to erase out this middle section and make it clean up a little bit. We can start adding our shades now. So this is about looking back and forth from your reference carefully and then adding the dark sections. And then I've taken my 7B or 8B pencil and I'm going to work in these dark sections now. And then the faded out section has still some very light shading. So when you have the top circle finished, we can start working our way around this inner ring. I'm going to continue my shading on through the middle section, leaving the white space around the edge.
and then you just see me here touching up these intersections with a darker pencil I'm using a very sharp 3B and I'm just going to touch up this inner ring and make it darker now we'll start building up um, this the circle that comes out from that and we'll be able to join this up now again just leaving that little white space around the edge and I'm just applying an even grade of shading and then I'm going to add this I'm going to add more pressure to my mechanical pencil and then I'm going to make this line darker around the outside and then when, that, when all that is in place I'm going to do these little circular shapes that make up the detail in our circle and then I'm going to add a layer of 7B so if you want to keep drawing guys um, check out our part 2 this is going to move on into that because it's a very long drawing okay thanks guys